meeting to order at uh, <laughs> 705, is it about? 605. 605, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we are going to pass on the reorganization. So I guess we would first need a motion for the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes of May 17. Second. Hello, I think they were all present. I wasn't uh, there. You were last not. meeting. So. so it would be 310. Okay, so you have your financial statements in front of you. Um, there are eight warrants to sign tonight in the amount of $62,100.16. Um, I did notice from the meeting last month, which I was unable to, to attend, that you had a question about um, the $10,000 deficit in building security. So what we did this year, that's on page five of your report, and it's now 10,50728. This is monies that have always been in our, um, in our building maintenance account, but it's monies that we have to pay for alarm, um, for alarms, for fire extinguisher um, stuff, all the security stuff that we have to pay for the building, which really isn't building maintenance. So we wanted to pull it out to see what, what, what are we paying in contractual costs to meet the codes for alarms and fire extinguishers and everything else. Um, so that is why we pulled that out and we made the adjustment in next year's budget so we could still have money to do repairs in the building, which we really do need. So if we were only budgeting 18,000, 10, almost 11,000 of that was going to stuff that we need every day. So we wanted to break that out and it really should go in the code for security of the building. So we did do that. Um, the, I have done a projection uh, to the end of the year and we look like we are going to be okay and may have a few dollars left over. So it's hard for me to say right now how much that will be. Uh, but in discussions with uh, Principal Barshevsky, uh, what we would like to do is to use any remaining funds with your permission for the new classroom that we have to add. We're going to need a smart board for that first grade. And also, we're having um, an explosion in early childhood, and we need to um, renovate, partially renovate some space to make room for the additional early childhood. So that's going to be some money um, in plumbing and things like that to uh, possibly get a bathroom. So with those funds, that's what we plan on doing, as well as taking care of the cafeteria when we get to that piece um, later in the agenda. So if you would approve um, the the use of any funds to go to equipping the new first grade and early childhood, we would appreciate that. And I think for, for um, the minutes purposes, we should have a vote on that, a motion and a second. So it's just a bathroom going? So this is the this is the um, extended classroom preschool space, mm -hmm. which is in the back locker room. Um, there's already a bathroom that exists there. Um, it's adding a toilet, a second toilet, adding partitions, um, adding an electrical outlet in one of the side rooms, um, purchasing <clears throat> flooring to go in there as well, kind of making it a little bit more homey as a as a learning space. We don't know how much we can get done or how much we can get done without the use of an architect. So we're going to try to make as many small repairs as we can. And also, like I said, he needs a smart board for the new first grade. Mm -hmm. You will be seeing this as a larger budget item in your preparation for next year's. Budget. We're probably going to have to put it on a warrant article for the next budget season. And that's in preparation for the possibility of having a full day preschool program. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Which would mean two two classes. Right. Two classrooms. Mm -hmm. Right. Which would be good. So that work would have to be done over the summer? 
we can only do minimal work right now because okay. once we get to a certain threshold, we're go it, it's going to require us to go out to bid to get an architect for drawings. So we're going to try to do what little work that we, what small work items we can, removing shower heads, stopping, you know, uh, you know, replacing the shower head <coughs> holes, whatever. Yeah. You know, um, so we're going to try to do as much minimal work that we're allowed to do without the use of an architect. There was a window added to that space. I don't think we can do that. No, there was a window added no, to that there. space oh, okay. like a yeah. few years back. Oh, okay. So. It's just preparation for the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. prepping, yeah, we're going to prep the space for future use. So what would the wording of the uh, motion be for the smart board to the classroom oh. and the you know, we could just say um, make a motion to use any unexpended funds for the preparation of the first grade and early childhood classrooms. So I'll make a motion to use any unexpended funds. funds from 2015-16 in preparation for smart board and first grade classroom and small adjustments in the preschool. Thank you. I'll second it. Okay, easy. All those in favor? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. And that's all I have until we get to other parts of the agenda. Unless anyone else has any questions about the um, financial statement. <coughs> Mr. Vice Chair, I have um, two people from the public who um, we have Diane Jensen Oshevsky. Annette Fennenbacher, um, and they have been diligent partners in coming to all of the school committee meetings to speak to the school committee about the organization Save Our Public Schools. And um, this has to do with not wanting to support the lift of the cap on charter schools. And what we have done with the other committees is I have drafted a letter on the different school committees. Um, support with their support uh, and sent to our legislators with uh, language around supporting maintaining the cap on charters so I don't know Diane are you speaking or yeah okay and I brought packets of information for everyone because there's a lot of talking points and it's a somewhat complicated issue there's also bumper stickers in there uh, and there's also a sample resolution that Marty alluded to. Do you guys have I have so I, many. I have one. For the other. <laughs> Thank you. If you could put the one right there, Diane, yeah, I've done. Done, uh, full Okay, do you want one? I would, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And do you know David Pierce? He is um, on our select board here in Sunderland, and he is very supportive of this and oh, good, he's wanting like to, to go get to more information at some point and so. talk to them. Yeah, just give the, give the time to the call. Because I know Trevor from. He came to our first meeting okay. that we had with Rosenberg way back in January. So. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just call the town administrator. She'll set you up with a, Great. A, an appointment. Great. When's your next meeting? Our next one is right now because of the holiday and everything is July 11th. Okay, I'll be so, out of town that day, so I'll have to... It'll be like two weeks after we went over to a, a, like an every other week schedule right. for the summer, in theory, anyway. So. <laughs> well, I'd first like to thank Marty for being so helpful with getting us on the agenda for the last, we were at, we've been to all the other schools. Waitley has already passed a resolution, resolution, so I didn't have to visit them. But um, I did bring a bunch of materials over to the school, and I I, I knew that Pete Christofuli was on board because mm -hmm. I saw him at an East Hampton event that was a, a big public forum on about the quality of public schools in East Hampton, and teachers spoke, and our union president spoke. But this campaign is a coalition of a bunch of different groups, parents, educators, students, Mass Education Justice Alliance, Jobs with Justice, Mass Teachers Association. It's a whole bunch of groups that have come together to work on it, fund it, and um, basically what, what we want people to know is that if it's not going to affect charter schools that are there now. That's not what this, is, this ballot initiative is about. It's about lifting the cap. If the cap is lifted the way the ballot initiative is written, 12 additional schools can be added every year, which doesn't sound like a big number. 
because the numbers in their initiative, like my union president says, are 1 and 12, which don't sound mind-boggling to anyone. But that's written into perpetuity, so every year you could get 12 new schools. And it's also written so that they don't have to just go into level four areas where schools have been underperforming, which has been in the past. So a lot of communities that have been typically immune to being targeted, you know, targeted or losing funds, and you'll see in here how much various communities lose. There's, a, there's an article in there about it. Um, will now be facing that because they'll be able to go anywhere. So. Um, we did have a really good piece of legislation that just got through our Senate, but it did have lifting the cap in it, even though it had many other good measures. There's not a lot of accountability where the money goes with charter schools because they, most of them, over 60% of them have corporate-like boards. Many of the people on the boards, most of the people on the boards are not educators, have not worked in education, They're, they have business backgrounds. and um, Some of the schools do have a parent, but that's, far and away the minority. Um, and in the inner city charter schools, there's been a lot written in the last year in many publications that are pretty scholarly about the system that they use that can demerit out kids that they don't really want to be there. So they have to keep kids until October 1st, and after that they get to keep our money. Mm -hmm. They can send the kids back to the sending school, that's um, second language learners, fed kids, kids with emotional issues, they get the money, they can't really educate them. They send them back, but the money stays with them. So uh, what happens is that sometimes there's this mass exodus after October 1st of kids coming back into the public schools. There have been numerous lawsuits with the Freedom of Information Act in our state to try to get records from charter schools, and they've refused and stalemated and then wanted to be paid exorbitant amounts of money to release their records. They can also hire non-certified teachers who just passed the MTEL, and they can hire, like, Teach for America kids that have a five-week diploma doing something, and, you know, they get a break on their college loan, which is great for them, but it's not so great for the students that are going to school because it's a very inconsistent situation. They, they usually last a year, they do their, their stint, and then they're gone. So um, charter schools typically have a much higher turnover rate, too, because their working conditions are, are far different, and they're at-will employees. So, I mean, they could literally come in and say to a teacher, you've got to work 15 extra hours for no pay. If you don't like it, get a new job. So, um, and there's been a lot of articles that teachers that have left charter schools have, have talked about that. So what we want to do is make this more known to the general public, and, and we don't want to demonize the charter schools. We just want to say, if the cap is lifted, it is going to be the beginning of the end of what we know as public education. And in other places where this has happened, like New Orleans, Los Angeles, there's many communities around the country, they have gone completely privatized. Um, and if you watch a business show on morning TV or anytime, you'll see that they discuss the education sector now. So they've figured out a way to take our tax dollars, <laughs> and it's becoming a booming business with with standardized testing and, and the whole lot. So we, you know, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is the birthplace of public education. It's Horace Mann's idea. And coincidentally, they're not fighting for the Horace Mann schools in this initiative because the Horace Mann schools have local control, have an elected official on a board, and have to be accountable. So they're, they're not making money on the Horace Mann schools. They're making money on the privatized charter schools. Um, and I think it's a huge civil rights issue. I, I was an early childhood special needs teacher for most of my career, and I see this as denying opportunities to kids to, to have, be in school having a quality program. And we have many communities in the Commonwealth that don't have full day kindergarten. And that's what, just one of the many things we can't afford. And so those kids don't have a level playing field when they hit first grade because they're only getting half a day of kindergarten, in many places you have to pay for the other half or it's a lottery system. So that's, until we make that kind of stuff equal, and we are also found, you know, funded on an old foundation budget, which was passed in 1993 when they did ed reform, and it's 2016, so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out it's not the right formula for what we need today, so. Um, and a lot of these schools, like in Springfield and Holyoke and Lowell, they teach to the test. There's, the teachers have a script where to stand, what to say. The kids don't really get like 
different subject matters. They literally are teaching to the test. They're taking tests to take the test, to pass the test. That's what. In the charter school. Yeah. Some of them are 55 days a year for test prep out of 180 plus day school year. So think about that. Like that's a third of the school year doing test prep, which is not teaching. And, you know, I, I know as a teacher every year I had very different kids in my classroom. So to be on the same script as the person in the next room is virtually impossible, especially since you have, you know, even in this school, kids coming and going to all of these other speech pathology and all of these other things. I mean, it's a really a lot of balls that teachers are juggling. And we, we take everyone in public schools. We don't have a waiting list. And we are the best schools in the country in Massachusetts. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight because I just feel, you know, what Marty has said over and over, and I've seen her on TV, you know, talking about this because this, they described it at our annual meeting of MTA as the existential threat to public education. And I, it, it's that bad. The NAACP has filed a lawsuit saying that it's a civil rights violation and because these schools aren't accessible to everyone. I mean, I take care of three kids that go to a charter school in East Hampton and there are taxi cabs that pick up and drop off kids there. So I know for me, my students in Chicopee couldn't have afforded to drive, you know, have the kids riding a taxi. I had, I had a lot of single moms that had no cars. They, they took public transportation. So. Um, but in, in, in Holyoke, there's two charter schools, and it's so lucrative, they provide busing. Yeah. Which is someone else is making money. And that's the whole right. thing, because of the unequal funding formula, mm -hmm. the people in the charter schools aren't really getting good education, but they're definitely getting the money, and that money's going to a corporation. And what's happening to the public schools, the money's getting siphoned out, and there's just so much less money to do <clears throat> what we need to do. Plus, with the tilt and all these, the tilt and the Fed kids coming back, it's just, there's a tilt. We need to have an equal funding formula. Right now, it's $408 million a year going out of public education. So if we lift the cap every year, you, you can, can imagine. You can imagine how this school is going to run. They won't be able to fix a light and switch around. Like Marty said, this is a preferred district, right? Like Sunderland, you're not losing any money, but your kids grow up, and guess where they go? To a school system that's losing $500,000 a year. So it's going to eventually affect the parents of kids that are in this school. And if the cap is lifted, you could have a charter school around the corner. Uh, in in your, your packet permission. is this letter that our state auditor, Suzanne Bump, wrote a while back because she was so disturbed by the poor data, the poor methodology of the data collection, the inadequate data that they were sending in. And she said, until we get that and have some accountability measures, we shouldn't be spending any more of the taxpayers' dollars in the Commonwealth on this because it's fraught with all kinds of issues. So it is supported by Governor. Governor Baker supports lifting the cap. Oh yeah, his Pizer is on the board of park. I mean, we don't yeah. have laws in Massachusetts about that conflict of interest stuff. We need to get those <laughs> because I think, you know, he's he's reaping the benefit of the product that he's selling basically. And I saw the papers from Bill Galvin's office with his name on the on the uh, corporation saying he, that he's now traded positions and moved a woman up there, but it's just like Putin and Medvedev, you know, they traded places, but we still know who was in charge. <laughs> One thing I'd just like to add, and everything that Annette and Diane have said is true, but I think most people out in the public do not really realize how their tax dollars are being spent. And again, we are not trying to disparage the current charter schools because I think there is a place for charter schools. But I think there has to be certain conditions put in place as to why one is formed, how that determination is made, how the funding goes along, that rural co coalition of um, superintendents of rural school co coalition that I've belonged to. I'm passing everything along to Lynn because, you know, what we had proposed was that if you're going to have an existing charter school, have the amount that affects the district the same as it is for choice. If you're only going to get uh, a reimbursement of 5000 or be charged 5000 then have the charter school only charge 5000 and have the state come up with the additional funding. But the current way that it's funded, we basically find out kind of after the fact, and it's usually about eighteen to Nineteen thousand dollars per depending student, on the charter depending school. upon the charter school, and they don't have to take every grade, and they don't take the early childhood special needs kids, which we all know are more costly right. because we're, you know, I had kids that were born at twenty-six weeks in my classroom, 
So I, I had kids coming to me with multiple needs. And I, the one thing I do know about early childhood is that every efficacy study that's ever been done has said you get more bang for your buck if you spend money early, right? Because mm -hmm. you remediate things, you do all kinds of things that if you wait to do them later, cost you more and become much more problematic in a regular ed setting if someone's in first grade and they need all of these things. So, you know, that is a no-brainer. So that's one of the things we can't fund very adequately. So I feel st strongly about that. And, you know, it, like Marty said, this is a coalition. So a long way back, a lot of superintendents of schools and school committees have been on board with this. And many of them have signed a resolution. If you go on the massteacher.org website, you can click on issues in action. It'll show you a list of all of the communities now that have made resolutions about this because everybody's doing what you're doing, oh, right? Trying one, to figure out how list. to I can pass it around. come up with the money. <laughs> to, and I subbed in this school after I retired, after 35 years in Chicopee, and I, you know, I told Marty, I'm in awe every day of what teachers are doing. I mean, this is a phenomenal school, and I, I worked in Deerfield, and my son went to Frontier. And I mean, the, this system of schools in, in Union 38 and Frontier are, are great schools I mean, with phenomenal teachers. And every year, teachers get more mandates put upon them, and still they're doing all these amazing things in the classroom that I never really, really got to see when I was teaching, because they don't give you release time to do that. But just being in people's classrooms here, you know, made me realize how great the public schools are and how much we need to fight for this. So we're going to have a table at the Greenfield Farmers Market, and we have, there's commitment cards in here, so if, if you get anybody or you would like to volunteer to just sit at the table with us on Saturday morning, or we're going to have canvases, we're going to have phone banking as we get closer to the time. When we get closer to, in July, we'll know what probably what the ballot question is, because the, all the things have to be certified by the Secretary of State, and then we get a number for the ballot question, and then we'll get bumper stickers that say, vote no on question whatever. So, or vote we'll, yes, depending on how it's ordered. Depend, yeah. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes complicated. So what we're asking I'm always tonight, the nerd that reads the um, is for the school committee to sign on to the resolution. Um, you would yes. be the fifth and final school committee to do that if you are so inclined to do so. And if you were to do that, I would be very proud, as my day, my last day is tomorrow, to do um, sort of one of my last obligations. So. One of the things that may help with this is the revision of the public records law that's going through, too, because it's going to put some very strong uh, limits on how long they can take to get information. Right. And also, uh, they can't charge excessive mm -hmm. amounts of money. So that hopefully will work in, in favor part. in terms of getting information mm -hmm. at least out of it. There was a week of action where a lot of teachers and ed educators in all buildings and, super and all personnel held these up to show what programs yeah. had been lost. There's a Facebook page for this group, and massteacher.org has a lot of stuff on Facebook. A lot of information. Um, but there are a lot of like teachers standing there with their signs saying, we lost a librarian or we lost this. Mm -hmm. or, so, I mean, that goes a long way. But I, you know, what Marty said is true. The vast majority of people, when you say keep the cap, they, they're, they, they're saying, are you going to take away my charter school? And it's not about that. It's, you, you know, that's a thing that you have to make clear to people. It's just not lifting the cap. So especially since, you know, I feel it should be a bipartisan issue because all people that are paying taxes in the Commonwealth should want to know where their money's going. Like, it makes absolutely no that's, sense. That, that That's an issue where it's, in a lot of ways, it's it's a it's a, a very form of taxation without representation yes, because it is. there's yeah. no representative for the taxpaying citizen. Yeah, and the League of Women Voters has also <clears throat> been studying it, and they created this complex, color-coded chart that's a flow chart that shows sort of what happens to the money, which is <laughs> extremely complicated. But what it boils down to is the per per pupil funds end up being much greater at the charter schools than they are in the public schools, and so that's a no-brainer, right? Like. To me, it's the same as I say this all the time, the Jim Crow South, because no, nobody in this room is going to go, I'm for the Jim Crow South. That sounds like a fair system, because it's not. I mean, we have separate and unequal environments, and like he said, we can't get any information to find out if they're telling the truth. We don't know how their lottery systems are done, if they 
actually have a lottery that's fair or if they have a bunch of selected families that they just decide to keep. So and we don't know why they send uh, students back to us. Right. Because students aren't often told. And so sometimes families, if they're not perhaps proactive or informed to say, okay, they said he was a troublemaker, or they said they, the favorite phrase is he can't meet our needs. The school can't meet our child's needs. And in reality, usually it's because of IEP or MCAS scores. Or English language learner. <coughs> or English and language and language if it's learners. a parent cooperative, I mean, I know for the parents I work with in Chicopee, some of them are working three jobs, so they can't be at a cooperative. They're just barely making ends meet to, you know, put the kid on the bus and go to their three jobs. So that doesn't make the school accessible to them at all. So, and I, you know, a lot of people talk about it being a union issue, but it's not a union issue. It's an issue of saving public education. It's a de uh, an issue of democracy in our country. Do we privatize education? Mm -hmm. Is that what makes a country strong, you know, the, for the future generations? If we do privatize it, we know who's going to be denied public education. You know, mm -hmm. we know who those kids will be. <clears throat> They'll be the already disadvantaged kids, the kids of color, the kids with special needs, the kids with mental health issues. And I've learned from my job in 35 years that I do not know when I, that child comes into my room at age three how he or she is going to turn out. And I've had amazing story. I could tell you stories for hours of kids that you would have counted out. But, you know, that's, that's what an education gives you. That's why, that's why people in this school work so hard, because they know they're giving something to kids that is this priceless thing, right? A way that you can change your life. So, so we've taken up more than our ten minutes. I'm sorry. Sorry. I also have these little thingies that I'll leave you, and my card if anybody wants it. <laughs> uh, these are little quickie things you can pass out to people. Or we have all this campaign to uh, post in my car. Did you have a question, Thanks. Um, well, um, that was a comment, but I think it's been covered. But then, and then the question was, so you mentioned, so if, um, to the possibility of having you send a letter. It's a, it's uh, a form letter that I yeah. have sent on behalf of the other school yeah. committees, just saying that they support not lifting the cap on charter schools. And it just says, you know, on behalf of the center mm -hmm. of the school committee, I support. And that's, it's fairly straightforward. And I put a sample resolution in there that you can look yeah. at that other schools have used. But, um, the main thing is just that people, more and more schools are signing on. And there have been a lot of people locally that have written op-eds and letters to the editor about this issue. But you know, we, need, we have to get, I forget the amount of signatures. They told us for Western, that the amount of voters oh, we uh, need to get. At least 200 to 250,000. Just in the Western part of the state. So that's to come forward. out and vote. It's going to be a lot of knocking on doors, but if you are in favor of this uh, keeping the cap, and just to understand that when you talk to people who have their kids in charter schools, it's not taking away their kids' charter school at all. What it's doing is not privatizing future education in the Commonwealth. That's basically what it boils down to. And there will be a big $18 million campaign coming from business interests to lift the cap, and they will make it look really good. But what they're basically saying, we're, we want to privatize education. The funders of this are the Koch brothers, the Walton Foundation, Freedom Works, and on and on and on. It's, it's hedge fund millionaires and billionaires and if that we don't have kids in our school. Is Bill Gates involved with us? Yes, he is. He spends all of his US money on these issues. He's very philanthropic in Africa and other places, but 80% of his dollars in the states goes to the standardized testing. By the way, his kids went to an opt-out school. So, <laughs> but he's making you buy the tests. <laughs> I wonder how those folks feel about things like Prop 2 and a half too, because if we had to pay the amount for every kid in our district mm -hmm. <laughs> that we pay to charter schools, Oh, it'd be, it, we, we, had the it best would, we wouldn't even be so close in the, in the town's budget. I mean, it wouldn't, you know. And it's, it's good just, it would drink. So. Right. Once, if we lose this battle, that's, that's just a land. Teacher it's, positions it's, it are already going. Fast, but it'll happen. Um, materials. We won't um, get it back. We won't be able to rein no. it in. We cannot lose it. I feel optimistic, but that's why I'm doing this, because, uh, you know, I want people to wear it. I'll have more buttons, too, so. 
If people just put a bumper sticker or get a conversation going about it, um, that would be great because the more I work on it, the madder I get that it's so unequal. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's just reached a tipping point. We didn't really see it sneaking up on us, but it has snuck up, and it's mm -hmm. it's it's got a wall up. And there are places in Colorado. There are places where whole school committee elections and school boards have been essentially bought by these groups that have come in and found their own people and funded their campaigns and changed the entire nature of the local school board so that it's made up of their cronies. So that's pretty frightening. There's a whole movie, Education Inc., about that. Do you, do, for the data, are, do you have stuff that's regional or local? Like, I mean, I think it would be interesting for you have, Western you have Massachusetts. In your packet, yeah, it shows packet. you every single community and how much money they lose. So how much? And then it's stuff like percentage of kids served with special needs in charter schools versus... Oh, zero. It's far I mean, I know, I know what it... I, I, I know intuitively, basically, it's zero, but if there's, like, nothing, you know... But stuff. that's what she's saying. You can't get the stats because they, they don't they have to answer don't. the freedom right. of information. Yeah, our they superior court judge that was around here, Bertha Josephson, what she... I read her decision. She just basically said, after they'd been through several battles in court, hand over the records in a week. You've got a week. Yeah. yeah. But, but we shouldn't have to... I mean, I can't imagine... Marty saying that to like, you know, Department of Ed in Boston. I mean, you know, that doesn't happen in public schools. They well, tell we do charge they, for it. If, if right. someone, if but you can only charge based on your lowest paid employee, employee. Right. right, and by the page, right, right. So if someone does have a, we have to a fishing that. expedition. Well, I'd like to know what their lowest paid clerical employee is because right. the prices are pretty high. Town, right? And that works both ways because people have used the public right. records a lot to harass towns as well right. too, unfortunately. But at least hopefully in this case it'll it'll benefit for getting some information. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I worry about schools run by by <coughs> Chamber of Commerce. I mean I would like somebody to run the school that is an educator. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you for your efforts ladies to take that blog and thank you for letting us come and tell our Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I'm going to do it. Oh, no, you could do it right now. This would be appropriate. Yeah. Just ask for a motion. Yeah. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'll be seeing you at the fairs in July when I have time. Tomorrow is my last day. So. Thank you for coming. Um, and uh, so, um, and entertain a motion on a letter uh, um, from Marty. It would be to support, to, the, to resolution support the resolution to not lift the cap, to maintain the cap. Um, I'll tell you, what, I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> Is it a second? I'll second. Any discussion about it? Don't need to tell me twice on this one. Okay. All right, all in favor? Thanks, Aye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That will complete the district, so that's very nice. Thank you very much. Um, Do you want to go back to reorganization? Or? Yeah, probably. Since we, I think we should. So I have to ask for nominations for chair, and then I will hand the rest of this off to the chair. So. Do I have any nominations for the position of chair of the Sunderland School Committee for the next year? You can take into account that I was late. Uh, oh, <laughs> wow, we, we did. To... Think about that. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, just as I was getting up to uh, print out my documents for the meeting and maybe even shave, I <laughs> got Greg's text. Meeting is it's not so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I am willing to continue to do it, and I'll uh, try to be a better, pay more attention to starting time. <laughs> you know, I put all these in my calendar that when I get that, that when we do the calendar yeah. for the next year, I put them all in, and then think I'm good to go. And no, thanks for paying. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Anyway, so. Um, but I'm also, if somebody else would would is kind of, is interested, I'm not. I'm all for, you know, new blood. 
<laughs> I'm willing to do it no, for another yeah. year. I'm still too green. <laughs> and nominate Doug. <laughs> All right, I nominate Doug. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any other nominations? Do we need vice chair? No, for the no, 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 no. first. Okay, so we'll close nominations. So all those in favor of Doug? Opposed? Do you, ex do you accept? I accept, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it 5 0 then because right. you can right. do it yourself. Then. I'm just moving things in. All right, <laughs> congratulations. I now will pass it over to you to do the remainder of the night. Crossed out these because policies are done, done. and negotiations are done. done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and actually, you can just appoint people from here on in. Well, if I can. You, yes. If they're willing. Okay. If they're willing to accept um, the positions. Do you want to continue as sure. vice chair? Anybody? Any? Anyone else wants it? <laughs> Feel free. Yeah, I was looking to. I don't see a lot of. Okay. It's all yours. You're pointed. Uh, Maisie, you are currently secretary. Yeah. Yep. It was such and a taxing job this year. Yeah. However, we don't know what the new with superintendent, the new superintendent she might has not decided whether or not she wants to take minutes or not. If she doesn't and if you she, don't, we can revisit. Yeah. So, do it. You don't okay. mind if she yeah. Okay. Yeah. And our frontier rep, uh, Keith, you willing to? Sure, unless anybody else wants to. Go to more meetings. <laughs> I'd be happy to do it. And then um, Union 38 reps, which these are our usually come reps, down to so voting. Yeah, typically yeah, we're all for there. For the joint meetings. But so. for the joint meetings, we're all there, but it comes to, to voting um, reps, and it's currently uh, the three of us here. Um, the guys. Yeah, we could, I, I could. Step out of my voting position. And so I actually already have a vote. Oh, oh. You do. Yeah, right, I, I vote right twice here. every time. So. Right, you know what? Okay, so yeah, so why don't we move okay. Keith out of a Union 38? Yeah, I'd like to do that. I changed my mind. Sure, I'll do it. Do that, Michelle? Okay, great. Um, you vote the same way both times. Right. Or do you split your vote? For Sunderland, I vote this way. For Frontier, I vote this way. Um. <laughs> and all right, and then uh, school council is currently Maisie yeah. willing to continue or yeah, yeah. That's okay. okay. That would be great. Some cut in there. Great. Um, and uh, the collaborative liaison. Um, do you want to still do that? Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, I would, I would welcome if somebody was interested in doing that. <laughs> I'm, um, uh, I also, I was, my attendance this year was pretty tragic, so, <laughs> which is, um, I did make the last meeting, um, but I'm going to miss the one, uh, okay. next week. Um, so. Is there anyone who has time for it? Because I will say that it's, it's especially good for new school committee members. I'm looking at you, Michelle, because you're the newest, but um, because you learn a lot and you get to meet other school committee members and hear what's going on in the district. So um, so if you can find people who have the time to go, it's yep. every other month. Every and other they month. they do feed you supper. Okay. It's usually pizza or something. Right. But, um, but I have found that new school committee members really benefit from it if you're able to do it. Yeah, if it's a week night. Mm -hmm. Typically, yeah. it is a weeknight. They're they're usually at six thirty. Okay. On Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Okay. And um, and it um, rotates between Northampton and uh, it used to actually go over the Waitley, uh, yeah. that regional library building. Yeah. Um, it's now the now, town offices. Mm -hmm. Right, but now it's been in uh, Greenfield at the, the Cog. Yeah, yeah. At the Cog. The last one was at Cog, um, which is a nice space there in the new transit building. Um, so yeah, yeah great, great, that. yeah. Sure. It, it, I mean, it's um, it's very interesting. I mean, the stuff that the collaborative does is interesting, and it's you know it is important that mm -hmm. that um, the individual um, school committees you know have that. The oversight's important because right. there've been. <laughs> 
abuses in other places. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, so there's the oversight part and the learning and, and that bottom line concept. So great, awesome. Thank right. you very much. That completes everything. I'll right. take it back and we'll print that okay. up. And yeah, here. Well, I'll, uh, well, you're going to send. You'll send it. Resend it out. Yeah, we'll okay. resend it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So um, do you can I, have your agenda? I don't or? because I, like I said, I as I was about to to print it, um, I. Well, no, I can tell you the next thing on the agenda is to vote the non-union salaries. Okay. As has been past practice for the last couple of years, okay. we have given it to you in May, and okay. then I ask the committee if they have any questions or concerns to email me or call me, and then we ask for your vote tonight. Okay. So. I do want to bring to there was one clerical error on um, one person and they it, it has been moved downward and that would be our custodian um, it had a uh, an additional dollar 25 added to the salary so that's been corrected so it's correct as you see it tonight okay. so we just need a motion and a second on that so Motion of the uh, uh, non-union salaries. Second. Um, discussion. The moment the yellow line done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, there it is. Oh, Got it. I knew it would look like that. That's cool. Um. So I'm. So, in, anything. Out of like, no, nope. okay. nothing that we didn't explain. Like I right. said, I made one correction on the second custodian okay. line, okay. Um, and that was it. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a motion and second. 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 Yeah, discussion. I was just giving. It looks like folks were looking. So That's I why I gave you the month. Given, I know. <laughs> <clears throat> I was going to use those next forty-five minutes. I thought I had. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, all in favor? Okay. Aye. Yes. Okay. So the next thing I'm. So glad to stop talking about this, but is the um, policies. I was so confident that you would vote these and approve these policies. I didn't bring them. It's the only school committee this month that I haven't brought stack to. Because not one person has taken them. Aren't you surprised, Greg? After all that work you did on these. Um, but I am pleased to say it's we have. Now, right? Not yet. Oh, it will well, be. I'm will waiting be. for tonight. Will be. It will be. So this is the last school committee to approve the final two sections of, of K and L. Um, and once this is approved, I hopefully will approve it and I'll notify people tomorrow and they'll start to get it up online. It should be up online in August. Um, and then we will continue to update it um, online as policies change and shift and, and laws shift. So. Um, so if you okay. approve it, so it will be online. Make a motion to approve K and L. A second. Is that amazing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Discussion? So we're the last school committee to approve it? No. No discussion. Five <laughs> <laughs> vote. All right. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 She's getting giddy because she's the last set of notes. <laughs> you can't make the clock go faster, are No, no. Are you kidding? Yeah. No. We want that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Great. Thank you. Thank you uh, again, Greg, for that, all the work on that, as, as well as our faithful administration. Yes. And, yes. Um, but, uh, no, it was fun. It really was. So I enjoyed it. Awesome. Um, okay, so then uh, the cafeteria report. Okay, so I gave you um, 
three sheets. There's two stapled together. Uh, well, actually, there's there's this is the results of operation. The one that one. is on landscape paper. And the first page is without the monies that are paid from the budget, okay? So we actually <coughs> lost $8,472.33 this year. But if you look at page two, we fund the positions um, of the, the food service director and one of the cafeteria workers who's part-time, we pay Frontier. So we add in the money that we owe Frontier as a transfer in, uh, which was $18,112. And we, it looks like then by adding that money that we are $9,639.67 to the good um, with funding those two positions. The second okay. sheets that I gave you is our, the, the ones that are in portrait, are our stats as far as particip participation goes. And I'm a little, I'm in a quandary because year to date, it says that the number of meals served were up 4,391 meals, but yet our revenue is down $400. And our participation's up 3.26%. So right now for the year, we had about 61% participation, which isn't great. We, they looked for us to be between the 70 and the 80% range. Um, but why we're up in everything except money, I, I, I don't know. I did have a conversation with uh, Deb Zanoski today. Um, some of her concerns are, of course, that salaries go up every year and the cost of goods purchased goes up every year. So she... Um, wants to work with Ben and any parent group for ideas. They have gotten rid of all food in a bag. That, that is gone. Um, she, you know, is trying to weigh the um, popularity and um, of certain foods with certain kids that have high participation with also keeping it healthy. And I think it's, it's a constant challenge. So, um, so she, she is open to ideas, she's open to, you know, locally, trying to promote some locally grown things. Um, she understands the concern about the time it takes to get through the line. So we tossed around a couple of ideas, she's going to come to you and, and uh, explore those a little further with you. I mean, um, from, a, from a financial perspective, we're overstaffed. Our meals per service hour are high, but that but we we can't do we have two and a half people on the serving line to get our kids through. It's going to be tough to justify putting any more labor hours on that line. And um, I'm wondering if there might be any supports through instructional assistance or parent volunteers, because I know the salad bar is popular. Um, but I know little hands take many minutes to do that. If there's another way mm -hmm. to approach. So I've asked Deb, Patty's asked Deb to um, talk to other food service directors. I said if there's equipment that we could buy that would expedite things, because mm -hmm. I know, you know, lunch is only a certain amount of time. Um, and, and or maybe we can prepackage the, sa the, le the, the lettuce and let them just do the add-ons, you know, on the salad bar, so that they would take a sa they would take lettuce and then they just go to the salad bar and add the cukes or the carrots, whatever that it is that they want. That might save us some time. And this has been a topic at our last two I know. school council meetings. Right. So we're we're reaching out to other schools and checking out the surrounding area to see what the best system would be for Sunderland Elementary School. So I think everybody's it, open yeah. to, and willing to discuss it and everybody understands the problem. What I said to the waitress school committee that they did have um, was that, so we, I know, but it may be time, and this used to happen years ago, where some of the salaries were budgeted as part of the school budget. What happened was we had everything budgeted years and years ago. And the reimbursement rate was high, the participation rate was high, it was different. And then revolving accounts started having a, a, an accumulation of funds that people said, well, why aren't we using this towards, sort of like what happened with the school choice. You start to get the, the money for the extras and then all of a sudden it becomes a necessary budget item. 
And so it chunked away and chunked away until finally nothing of the cafeteria, it was a total standalone, nothing mm. was supported. And then the with, the, with the Healthy Nutrition Act that was put in by the yep. feds and the state and adopted it so that we could keep our federal re, uh, funding, the mandates of what can be served, the participation has gone down. You know, because we can't do the fun stuff, the cheeseburgers every day. We can't do French fries every day. You know, so we can't do anything fried. It's interesting. Can't do anything fried. Can't do everything. Has to be whole grain. So, and whole grain is more expensive. So our costs have gone up. Our participation's down because the kids would rather bring a lunchable than have you know a healthy lunch. And the parents are like, well, I just want my kid to eat. <laughs> you know, so we're we're stuck in this little. I I think it's the opposite of that. We don't participate because it's not a healthy enough meal for our family. Lots of things that we serve, we don't eat right. at home. Right. My kid would love to eat every day. We say you can choose two. And there's some meals we say you can't have at all. And I, we've heard that from other parents, and that's right. one of the things we're, we're working and on. And that's what we're working on with, um, with, with looking at other menus, because I know um, another school in our district went a long way with the PTO uh, to help their menus be gluten-friendly um, and diabetic-friendly. Um, and they worked with the, with the nurse, and they worked with the parents, and, and their main course is now, it doesn't have to be, well, this is for the gluten kid, this is for the diabetic. They are already gluten and the diabetic. The problem is friendly. their participation rate is less than 50%, though. So your participation rate, there is nobody that is 70% in our district. Right. I think 66. Just to mm -hmm. put it in perspective, it goes from 45 mm -hmm. to 67. Hmm. So we're so, at 60. You're at 61. Yeah. So yours is pretty much right, right in there. So it is a conundrum, you know. I don't know exactly what the solution is, but I think if you have a lot of bright people with, you know, a, a goal in sight, that you'll get there through further discussion. The last thing I do want to bring to your attention is that right now we have two thousand two hundred and three dollars worth of unpaid lunch bills. So when you look at the financials. That's showing you how much money we made. But when I go to balance with the town, I'm going to be short $2,203 because those monies aren't collected. So our actual fund is going to be in the negative. So we need to take some of our funds at the end of the year when we're done paying our bills. And if I don't have that money collected, so parents, please send in your checks uh, by next Wednesday so that we can collect the money and not have to take money out of the classroom to pay for the school lunches. Uh, because $2,203 is a lot of money to have to pay out of the budget. Um, so I would really appreciate an appeal to the parents. If you have an outstanding balance, please get your money into us. Have they been contacted? Yes, yes. they have. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes things are bought without. No, they've all been contacted. And some people, it's their past practice. I looked at the list today of unpaid bills, and um, some of them are fairly substantial, but that has been their past practice to wait until the summer and write a large check, and they've done that in the past. Most of them are small balances, $20, $22. And I think it's just an oversight. And once people are made aware, they'll probably you know, do so. So that's all I have on the cafeteria. And we already discussed the end of the year. Yep. Uh, for your information, Doug, um, before you got here, during my other report, if we have any funds available, we're going to use them to prep the new first grade with technology and the early childhood expansion, uh, try to get the room ready uh, with any funds that are available. Okay. And that's all I have. And that's all we have, except for reports. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me kick off reports. Um, quickly and, and uh, say where, where I was going to start with, <laughs> had it been your, um, uh, which is um, to say um, a big thank you uh, to Marty Barrett. I know you don't want any fanfare, and I'm not going to give you fanfare, but okay. but um, but uh, I want to say. Uh, Selfishly, I am very glad that you weren't a star of the big stage in London. <laughs> but I was a flop. Uh, because, well, I was a major flop. <laughs> uh, but you've been a big star on our little stage here. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, it's, um, 
been greatly appreciated by many years of many people. Uh, your work in oh, well, many you, forums Dave. in this area, and um, and now Steve has a uh, dinner companion again. More, yeah. <laughs> more nights of the week. I think he's more <laughs> nervous about this than I am. So, but, um, yeah. you know, I I know I speak on behalf of, of all of us here and and many many people out there. Um, to uh, thank you, and we'll miss you, oh, and uh, we know where you live. <laughs> you do, and, and I have a bench out there that I just might occasionally come sit and watch the time. <laughs> well, thank you very much. So. It's been a pleasure. Um, so, uh, committees, um, collaborative, did me, I'm going to think about the, that because that was also, I was going to have my notes out, um, but any other committees met in the meantime? Reports? No? I think just Ben's is probably. Um, we got in the, in the um, collaborative. Uh, nothing, I don't think anything dramatic in terms of impacting. No, the they did their end of the year financials right. and um, they have a major um, summer program going on. Those um, flyers have all been distributed. We have some of our teachers from our district who are doing those workshops. Um, presenting. Presenting, yeah. So they, they do wonderful professional development. So yeah, I think that was primarily yeah. it for the Yeah, there was, yeah, we had a, some executive session, but then uh, that's not public. And then, yep. Um, that's it for committees? OK. Um, well then, um, do I have, uh, oh wait. Ben I, sorry, Ben, you do have a report. That's right. Sorry, Ben. Great. <laughs> and, and I want to start off by thanking Marty as well. And there is a, uh, a legendary basketball coach for DeMatha High School, uh, Morgan Wooten, and he said, never lose sight of the impact you're having on young people's lives. And when I think of Marty, um, not only in her time as a teacher, but as a principal and now as a superintendent, you have affected in a positive way hundreds and hundreds of lives of students. So um, as, as a leader, um, as a mentor to teachers, to myself, the admin team, you've done so much and we really, everything you've done can't be measured and can't be put into words. So we thank you for everything you've done. You're the first one to say you Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so. On that note, the principals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we had our second annual Sunderland in Action Day on Friday, May 27th. Um, this is a day where our students go out into the community and perform community service projects. Um, there was some gardening that took place at the New England Health Center, trash pickup around the walking loop, and also a couple projects over at the town offices, town library. On campus projects included uh, planting gardens in the kindergarten wing, um, another little garden space outside of the library here, and cleaning up the Mer Mer Memorial Garden as well. So it was a big success. Um, kids had a lot of fun, and I also think they, in addition to that, they take a lot out of the experience. And we, we talked to the kids about the importance of giving back to the community, and that's kind of what the whole day is built around. Uh, we also had our second, or no, not our second annual, this is our third or fourth at this point, um, Walk and Roll School Day. We had our biggest turnout to date with over 175 students, staff, and parents participating. Our PTO sponsored a brec breakfast, <clears throat> and the local, uh, the local bicycle company in town, uh, Blue Steel Bicycle Company, uh, donated gift certificates to the event. So uh, thank the owners for that very much. Our final all-school sing was held on the last day of school, June 14th. And um, we typically have this event to honor retirees and our sixth graders. This year there are no retirees, so it was meant to honor the sixth graders. And each grade level performs skits and sings songs. And um, the fourth graders provided each sixth grader with a precept from the book Wonder, which is a uh, 
anti-bullying book and it was really, really nice. We're gonna be very busy here over the summer. Uh, River Valley Day Camp starts on June 27th. Horizons Camp starts on July 5th, uh, July 18th. Uh, for two weeks, we have reading camp and then the first, um, uh, then the two weeks, that's slightly off. It should read the first two weeks in August, um, August 1st to August 12th as the math camp. Kindergarten Ice Cream Social is on August 30th. And right now our numbers, we have 33 kindergartners registered for next year with a 34th um, in the process of signing up. Just, and this is just as what we had projected to. Um, and that bump is a lot of in-town students moving in. Well, I, I don't have a written report, um, but I do, I do want to thank everybody. It really has been a pleasure. Um, 43 years goes really quickly. So <clears throat> be, be prepared because it all of a sudden smacks you in the face and you go, wow. But it really has been fun. And um, I didn't start out in this district, but I always kept coming back to this district. And so even when I left to go to Mohawk or Greenfield, I always, my heart was always here. So um, it's been fun watching kids grow up now their kids are in school, and boy, when I get grandchildren, it's probably close to my death. But um, <laughs> anyway, it's, it really has been fun. I know you'll continue to do great things with, with the district, and um, I'll be watching, because I'm right over there. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Well, we could just never adjourn, and then she couldn't leave. No. <laughs> I have a <laughs> great day. Is, is, is there anything right. in the contract? No. They have. They did ask me today to stay on just to do some consultancy for some for transition, and I'm happy to do that. Um, I've also been asked by several other districts to do that as well. But I would like to just take a month, you know, to relax, and um, but I'm happy to help in, in this transition. Because um, I know the learning curve is steep, so Great. I appreciate that. But so you may see me around or hear my voice. Yes. I promise I will not call you for snow days. <laughs> <laughs> promise. She's passing that baton uh, or that barometer. <laughs> I know my superintendent's association gave me a barometer. Actually, did they, uh, they did <laughs> because they heard about my story standing out in my nightgown at 3:30 a.m. with my cell phone going. Is it raining? What is, is that sleet? What, really what is it? <laughs> so uh, at that part, I have to honestly say I will not miss. Hmm. But, but this is a great district, and you, you will all continue the charge. And please do not forget about the cap. I, I, I can't stress enough what Diane said. I think this is the death of public schools if, if they lift this cap on charters. And, and I... Uh, it worries. It worries me. So. All right. Well, then I guess I will entertain a motion to there adjourn. At seven ten. All right. Greg Keith. All in favor. Greg Keith. Uh, yeah. Your last note. Yay! Yay.